Today on Christian World News, in the face of imminent danger, Iraq's Christians make a very bold move in the hopes of securing their future. And the revolution that rocked Romania 21 years ago, it started with a chant, God exists, and led to the downfall of a tyrant. Plus, the nativity. That's right, how these net heads in the UK are using social media to add new life to the greatest story ever told. Welcome to Christian World News, everyone. I'm Wendy Griffith. And I'm George Thomas. In recent weeks, Iraq's Christians have suffered some of the deadliest attacks against their community since the 2003 invasion. Now they are taking a bold step to gain security. This is the Nineveh Plains. Assyrian Christians who trace their roots to the time of Noah have historically claimed this area as home. Now, Iraqis are calling for this place to be officially declared a Christian province. We have 500,000 Christian refugees in the neighboring countries. And so our position has been very clear to the government. These people will not come home until they have a place to go to. Ken Joseph is with the Assyrian Alliance. He and leaders of 16 other Iraqi Christian organizations recently met to talk about forming a Christian province. Joseph says just getting the different groups to agree on something as historic as this was nothing short of a miracle. They put away all their arguments and they got together and did it. Iraqi Christians have in recent weeks been prime targets of Muslim extremists. The biggest attack came October 31st when members of an Al-Qaeda group attacked a church in Baghdad, leaving 68 people dead. Iraqi believers are now wondering whether it's time to leave their homeland despite calls to stay. We are addressing you, our dear sons, in these difficult days, appealing to you to be constant in your faith and love to the soil of this homeland, Iraq. As the violence against Christians escalates, hundreds of Christian families began fleeing to the Kurdistan region of northern Iraq. It's the best of times and the worst of times. It's the best of times because for the first time, people have freedom. They can do things they've never been able to do before. The church can do things they never were able to do before. But it's also the worst of times because you have forces that are desperate to keep this success um, from ever accomplishing its goals. Since the October attack, several more people have lost their lives, including a Christian shopkeeper who was shot in the city of Mosul. And as the violence here in Mosul increased, Christians have become more open to this idea of an autonomous region, an area where they can not only practice their faith, but live in freedom. It would be great to live in a place where I'm not forced to wear the veil or follow strict Muslim codes of conduct. In the last couple of years, wealthy Christian businessmen have poured millions of dollars into the Nineveh Plains, building churches, schools and homes for displaced Christians. The idea is that we would have a place run by Christians, have our own flag, our own government, our own security force. One million Christians lived in Iraq before the 2003 U.S. invasion. Less than half of that number still remain. Joseph and others hope a new province will persuade Iraqi Christians to come back and help rebuild their homeland. The Iraqi parliament uh, obviously still has to approve the plan to turn the Nineveh Plains into an autonomous region for the country's Christians. Pope Benedict says Christians are the world's most persecuted religious group. This declaration came during his annual World Peace Day message. The Pope says religious intolerance and violence is an insult to God and human dignity and a threat to world security. He cited the recent attack on the Catholic Cathedral in Iraq and also condemned what he called sophisticated forms of hostility, including rejection of religious symbols. Christian author and journalist David Aikman recently told me that most Americans aren't even aware of abuses against the global body of Christ. For two or three generations now, we've had elite universities basically teaching uh, their undergraduates that the only villains in history who oppressed others for religious reasons were the Christians. Mm. And the Crusades are always brought up. So knowledge of Christian communities um, in different countries of the world is extremely poorly taught in American colleges and schools. 
David Aikman had much more to say about the persecution of Christians around the globe. You can find the full interview on our website, cwnews.org. Are children bearing the brunt of the global economic crisis? The U.S. government fears that could be the case. The Labor Department released its annual report on child labor, calling on countries that violate international standards to end the abuse. Heather Sells has more from the newsroom. The U.S. government says it doesn't want to punish or shame the countries where child laborers toil, but it does want to shine a light on the abuse of some 215 million children. No family should have to depend on the labor of its children to put food on the table, and no person should be forced to work in captivity. The latest report shows that while child labor fell by about 3 percent from 2004 to 2008, the rate of decline has since dropped off. Officials say they're concerned that the global economic crisis is putting increased pressure on the poor, leading to further exploitation of children. I'm talking about children who are forced to work and denied the opportunity to go to school. These children endure long hours for little or no pay. The report says India remains home to the greatest number of child laborers, followed by China and it includes a list of 128 goods produced by child labor around the world. Six new goods were added this year, including coffee and sugar cane from El Salvador, tea from Rwanda, and diamonds from several African countries. The U.S. government is hoping that the report will motivate other governments to take action on child labor. Labor officials also told CBN News that churches and faith-based groups are a key part of the solution. The religious leaders um, can explain to the families why it's so important to keep the children in school and then help work out the programs in the community that will allow that to happen. The Labor Department says churches can inspire parents to make this progress with their children and in many cases are probably the decisive factor. Heather Sell, CBN News. Coming up, 21 years ago, thousands of Romanians took to the square at Timisoara. How their call for spiritual freedom sparked a political revolution. CWNews.org, your constant news source on the World Wide Web. Find daily updates on the global church. Watch the weekly broadcast. Three former presidents come together to honor the life and ministry. Also available in podcast the in-depth insights into our reporter blogs. Taliban kidnapped at least 18 in South Korea, Korean Christians. Your Christian online news source for complete coverage of the global church. Have you ever wondered why some people seem to achieve success so readily? They're able to see opportunities all around themselves. Conquering challenges this is it. and achieving success. Oh, thank you so much. How is it others are able to overcome destructive behaviors and find true satisfaction in life? And what enables some people to have such faith in God that they see miraculous answers to their prayers? The answer to these questions and how to live a victorious life are found in the secret laws of God's kingdom. In Pat Robertson's latest teaching, The Secret Kingdom, Volume 3, you'll discover powerful keys to unlock the miraculous in your life. As you follow the laws of the secret kingdom and make them a part of your life, the results will be nothing short of incredible. If I could build this big, strong body, this armor around myself, then nobody could hurt me again. I felt like if my mother didn't love me, my biological father didn't love me, then how in the world could anybody else love me? God loves us and he wants the best for us. I'm living proof of that. Just give him a chance. Well, 21 years ago this month, the Romanian people rose up against a communist regime and after a week of bloody protest, they broke the chains of captivity. As Ephraim Graham reports, the political revolution birthed a spiritual turning as well. The streets of Oradia, Romania are a buzz of activity at rush hour. People making their way to work and school each day paint the picture of freedom for the young democracy. How would you describe your country, Romania? 
It is a beautiful country with sad people. The sadness comes from Romania's not-so-distant history. Communist dictator Nicolae Ceausescu ruled the Eastern European country for more than 20 years. I remember the feeling of the terror. I remember not having food. He, he liked to be called our provider or our father, a god almost. They tried to tell us that there is no god. Titus Pop was a child when Ceausescu ruled Romania. But as the son of Christian parents, he endured the pain of the dictator's regime. Teachers punished him at school for his family's faith. I had a professor in each history class. They put me to stand. Sometimes they beat me, but just a few times. They also told him he would not be allowed to attend high school and his education would end at eighth grade. God worked in such a manner that when I finished my eighth grade, the revolution came just when I was in the eighth grade. December 16, 1989. Romanian people packed the central square in Timisoara, crying, God exists, God exists. Despite military attacks, the cries to God and protest against communism went on for seven days. In second day of revolution, in 17 December, I was in Freedom Square. Trayan Orban was a 45-year-old veterinarian when he joined the thousands who filled the square. He stayed to protect innocent children and was shot twice in the leg. And I'm not angry. I'm happy. I'm happy because we can to do something. We demolated something. Orban has turned memories of those seven days into the Timisoara Revolution Museum. He says his life actually began after the revolution, because that is when he accepted Christ. I am 20 years old because my life has changed. It's changed radical. Today in Freedom Square, you can still see bullet marks in the buildings, but more noticeable are the fountain fast food restaurants, and people who are free to walk and to worship without fear. During that week in December 89, it was a cry among the people. Today in Timisoana, tomorrow in the whole country. Tudor Patan is on a mission to reach his country and all of Eastern Europe with the gospel. He launched the Alpha Omega ministry in 1994. It's now a 24-hour Christian television network. Would you say the revolution that started here was not just political, but also spiritual. The revolution against the communist system in Romania started in this city, in Timisoara. Timisoara is considered by many to be the spiritual capital of the country. It's a symbol of the, uh, the revolution, a symbol of freedom. Freedom is spreading. The revolution allowed Titus Pop to finish high school and to go on to college. He's now a pastor reaching out to Romania's once forgotten gypsy population. And I'm very pleased that God called me here. Where is, where is Grace? Ephraim Graham, CBN News, Romania. Coming up, the emissions movement that swept up a generation and changed forever the way we take the gospel to the ends of the world. And later, tweeting the Christmas story bringing Mary, Joseph, and the wise men to life through the wonders of social networking sites. It's the one thing news viewers can agree on. They want change. Now, the world's leading Christian news organization brings you national, international news and analysis throughout the day. Mornings, the busy lunch hour, late afternoon, and evenings. It's news with a Christian perspective whenever you want it. Available on the web 24-7 at cbnnews.com. You and I live in a visible world, yet there is at work all around us an invisible kingdom of unlimited goodness and power. In the Bible, Jesus Christ has given us fundamental kingdom principles that are as valid in our world today as the law of gravity. These principles can overcome every obstacle or circumstance we encounter and guarantee our success. 
In The Secret Kingdom, Volume 3, the final teaching in the inspiring DVD series, Pat Robertson reveals how the power of God's kingdom works and unlocks the secrets of fidelity, miracles, and dominion. Powerful principles that will change your life. You can reach from a world of impossibilities into a realm of limitless possibility and power. The Secret Kingdom, Volume 3, available now. I came a slave to it. It got really, really addictive for me. I say, God, you have to deliver me out of this. Of that woman of God laid her hands on me. My God instantly delivered. I didn't have any more feeling to smoke, to use crack cocaine. I didn't want any of that anymore. And if he could change me, he could change anyone. During his 50-year history, Youth with a Mission has transformed modern missions by commissioning young people from more than 200 nations to help complete the Great Commission. The ministry has given people from all backgrounds the freedom to use unconventional methods to share the gospel. The waves started to sweep across all the continents of the world, and they were from young people from everywhere going to everywhere with the gospel of Jesus Christ. For Lauren Cunningham, that vision first took shape in 1960. Fifty years later, those waves of young people have reached the shores of every nation on earth. Nearly four and a half million people from over 200 countries have been involved in Youth with a Mission. Using evangelism, training, and mercy ministries, YWAMers have fanned out across the globe. I began to see that God was calling us to break some norms and change the paradigm of missions, although I didn't really know what all that meant except we were used to do the radical. Lauren's wife Darlene played an integral role in the formation of their work. Together, they focused on developing the potential they saw in others. We have always recognized that it's gonna take everybody to do it and that God has uniquely made different people. We were called to release young people into their destiny. Now, Christians didn't think that missionaries were anyone but a, a Westerner speaking to non-Westerner, often under a shade tree with a pith helmet. And that was the, the view of a missionary. And, and that was not what God's view was. We asked God, we said, well, who is a YWAMer, Lord? He says, anyone that I send to you. Kenny and Maria Jackson were among those released into positions of responsibility. The couple teach and train at YWAM's University of the Nations. I'm Korean. I'm ordinary, especially woman. I mean, who am I? And he really, uh, Lauren and I modeled for us to encourage me, because you are Korean, you can rise up and go to the ends of the earth. And they're really... That is, I think, hard for Jesus. Jesus will do the same thing because he's not a white, right? So he's a Jewish. He's born in such a brown skin, and he really understands that. And there is room for all, as evidenced by the YWAMers gathered from over 100 nations at the final Jubilee Year celebration in Kona, Hawaii. At the opening of the ceremony, I saw all the nations there, and I'm like, Every day is like the United Nations meeting <laughs> in my life. I'm, I meet someone, oh, I'm from Hawaii, oh, I'm from Samoa, I'm from Australia, I'm from Ghana. I'm, it's just, that's my life of every day. I'm just so thankful. I heeded to the call and the voice of Jesus, knowing that he was willing to use an Indian, ordinary person to bless the nations to 245 countries, including Antarctica. And that fact clearly shows to the world that God is no respecter of nationality, color, or anyone, that he could use anybody from any nation to pick them up and be a blessing to the nations out there. Today, more than 20,000 full-time YWAMers are deployed in every sphere of society, taking creative risks when few others will. You put yourself in a place of risk, but that risk is actually the most certain place you could ever be because you are walking on obedience and doing the very things that God has asked you to do. And because of that, your life is full of adventure, full of real stories, not just uh, concepts that, that you get to hold in your mind, but you actually get to live out and share with other people. When he asks us to take a risk, 
you know, and you're saying, God, I can't do this. I can't, I can't do it. Well, then, you know, you hear that wonderful voice of the Lord said, oh, I'm so glad you know you can't. Now I can. As staff and students gather to celebrate the past, another wave of young people have received the torch from YWAM leaders such as John Dawson. All the nations are sending nations. They all have in their Bible the Great Commission, no matter what language they read it in. And so we need each other desperately. So at this point, YWAM is a majority non-Western mission. It's an incredible thing to see the riches of Jesus revealed through the human creation, blended together in this adventure that we've experienced these last 50 years. It fills my faith to know that it's really possible to finish the Great Commission in this generation. We've just been the people that have had this enormous privilege of blowing the bugle. And uh, we have been honored and humbled by what God has done. And He indeed is the wave maker. And it's my desire to see these waves get bigger and go farther and be more powerful. And you can learn more about Youth with a Mission and the work of global evangelism at our website, cwnews.org. We'll be right back. We created this website as a place where kids can learn the Bible in a whole new way. Kids will love Superbook.tv. Their games, the ability to create your own personal Superbook characters. We even have a place for kids to listen to music on Superbook Radio. Superbook is CBN's animated series that teaches the Bible through the eyes of two friends and their robot sidekick. We're going to tell stories all the way from creation to Christ's return. The website also teaches kids life lessons. Parents can spend time online with their kids learning about the Bible. Superbook and Superbook.tv are entirely gospel-centered, and by supporting it, you'll help bring God's Word to children all over the world. We're reaching a new generation with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Together, we can give today's kids the truth of the Bible in a fun and exciting way that will change their lives. Visit Superbook.tv today. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy? When we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Christian World News, your window to the global church for stories of revival. revival. Persecution of relatives and fellow Christians born in the first country over the international day. I'm George Thomas in Baghdad and coming up on the broadcast an exclusive interview. And the impact of Christian leaders. Watch Christian World News. Well, there's been a record number of tourists in Bethlehem this year, and now. You guessed it, there's literally no room at the inn. Hotel rooms are fully booked for Christmas week due in part to declining violence in the West Bank. Already this year, 1.4 million tourists have visited the Church of the Nativity, the traditional birthplace of Jesus. The Israeli government says 90,000 people will likely visit during the Christmas season. Tens of thousands are expected to gather in Manger Square on Christmas Eve in front of the church. It'd be great to be there, wouldn't it? Sure would be. Well, finally this week, uh, a new take on the greatest story ever told. Twitter and Facebook followers are seeing the Christmas story come to life in a form of a unique outreach called Nat... How do you say that? Natwivity. Natwivity. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, okay, that's a new one. Good job. Well, through tweets and posts, they're experiencing what it might have been like for Joseph, Mary, even Herod in the days surrounding the birth of Jesus. UK correspondent Peter Wooding has the story. It's a story that's been told for over 2,000 years, pretty much in the same well-preserved way. We all know it, Joseph and Mary's journey to bring the baby Jesus into the world. But as busy shoppers up and down the UK pass traditional nativity scenes like this one, the story of Christmas is coming to social networking phenomenons, Facebook and Twitter, in the form of nativity. 
Throughout Advent, people can follow characters like Mary, Joseph and the wise men and shepherds telling the Christmas story in tweets, those short 140-character messages used on Twitter. The tweets are sent by characters in the Christmas story, sharing their thoughts as they take part in the greatest story ever told. Here, Joseph announces he's on his way to Bethlehem for the census. Nativity is the brainchild of Hugh Tyler with Christian organisation Share Creative. Tyler says it's a fun way of reconnecting people to the true story of Christmas. So we decided to uh, do this creatively, to use these sites, Facebook and Twitter, to really engage on a different level with this story. Um, we know it so well um, kind of through the Bible and through uh, how we explore it in church, but this actually gives us an opportunity to engage with it on an emotional level, to find out more about the, the characters as they, they tweet and they, they status update their story as, they, as that kind of unfolds. Tyler says as so many people spend hours on Twitter and Facebook, it's vital for Christians to maximise this opportunity to share their faith. Social media is a great opportunity uh, to be able to reach out uh, and to, to find a new audience. There are absolutely millions of people um, using these sites. It's a really good way of building community. It's a really good way of kind of um, extending, that, extending that reach of, of the church out to, to a whole new level. The script for the Twitter nativity has been written by a team of writers, including popular British Christian stand-up comedian Paul Carenza. I just thought it was uh, a fascinating look at new media and a great way of uh, linking up uh, you know, this great thing of you know, the Twitter, this new area that people are uh, slowly getting involved in now, uh, and doing some creative uh, writing, particularly comedically, comedy writing is my background, and I just thought it was a great way of connecting with people, particularly at Christmas. Since Nativity was launched at the beginning of Advent on December the 1st, thousands are signing up to follow this social networking outreach. Christian mother Crystal Chamke loves following the Nativity tweets each day. When I've um, been following the characters in the Nativity, um, that they've, they've suddenly become real people. Um, it, once upon a time, they were just a single dimensional people that you read in a book about, maybe with a little bit of background. But here you're getting real people. Chamke believes this is a great way to bring the Christmas story to life for many more people like her. I think it's very effective. I certainly invited all my non-Christian friends to have a um, read and, a, and the opportunity to follow this story. Um, I think it's very effective because it is making the nativity real in people's lives so that people can relate to these individuals who are feeling real things. So as the Share Creative team continues to tweet the Christmas message throughout Advent, it's hoped Nativity will enable many more people to connect with the true saviour of the world this month. Peter Wooding for CBN News, London, England. And, you know, it's hard enough to say Nativity, but to mm. say it with a British accent, it just gives that little something, it sure don't you does. think? And it's always encouraging to see people around the world who use creative mm. forms to herald, chronicle and illuminate the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think that's what Jesus would do. He sure would. Well, folks, that's <laughs> all for us from here at Christian World News this week. Until next week, goodbye. And God bless you, everyone. Take care. We'll see you next time.